Welcome into the BMW 3 Series GT. This, folks, is the 320D. What's different between this and a normal 3 Series or a normal 3 Series Tour? Okay, it's slightly longer by 200 mils, which, folks, amounts to 20 centimeters, was actually chunky enough, which means you get better leg room to the back in there, right? We'll talk about that in a little while. As well as that, we've got this kind of grand coupe like rear to it. So, this is effectively a hatch. It's a 3 Series hatch. The other thing as well, one of the other differences between this and normal, let's say, 3 Series Touring, you actually get better boot space in this than you would in a, in a tour in the state version of the car. I am an ex 3 Series owner. Um, my last 3 Series was an E46. It was a Touring. Uh, and I have to say that I was not a fan of it and I was happy on the day that I got rid of it. There were too many kind of common problems with the car itself. We had a coolant tank that exploded. Uh, we failed many as an NCT with it. And I suppose the last NCT I said, right, it's time to get rid of it. Now, prior to that, just so you know a little bit about me is I used to own an E39 as well. And I have to say, folks, my favorite car ever. I take it back in the morning. It was a fantastic car. Anyway, more about this car here. This is the 320D GT. Uh, first off, what do you think of the looks of the car? I actually think it's not bad looking and the reason why I'm saying not bad looking is because I wasn't a fan of the 5 Series GT. I thought it was one of the ugliest looking cars on the road. I just don't get it. Whereas this, it's smaller and I know it's based as in the, the looks and everything are based on that 5 Series GT. This is a far more attractive package, I think. I think the, the color that we're driving here at the moment is Alpine white. I know my cameraman isn't fond of it because when it comes to filming white in sunny weather like this, yeah, we're getting strange sunny weather here in Dublin, Ireland. In funny weather like this, white is quite difficult to catch on camera, but I have to say it does look stunning. I like the kind of, I suppose, all the design details on this car, they stand out more, the chrome detailing, as well as that, the black detailing around the car. Now, what's different about this? Well, this was facelift in 2016 for 2017. You've got these nice rounder LED lights to the front. There's a few tiny differences on the uh, grille to the front as well. It's kind of a midlife facelift, uh, not a midlife crisis. So not much has really changed in terms of that. The engines have become more fuel efficient. Um, and it, well, but we still got pretty much the same engine lineup, but they're just a little bit more efficient. This is like, for example, 120 grams of CO2, which means it's not extremely expensive to tax. Now let's get some of the stats out of the way. On paper, we're told by BMW, you're gonna return 4.4 liters per 100 kilometers. I'm looking at my odometer here in front of me. It's telling me that I am returning an average of seven liters per 100 kilometers. Now that's only after about maybe 200 or so kilometers of traveling, but I have had a good mix in of let's say country roads. At the moment we're on a city road, which is why I'm traveling so slowly. We've been out in motorway and things like that as well. Other thing as well is we're driving a fantastic eight speed automatic here. It's an absolutely brilliant transmission setup. And uh, as well as that, we got the flappy paddles here if you want to go through the gears yourself. 7.7 seconds to get from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour and that's with this eight speed automatic gearbox. I think if you go manual, it's 7.8 or there, thereabouts. So this is nice on the road, very nice on the road. Typically German, typically BMW. It's uh, I, definitely not boring. It's actually quite an exciting drive, but I find that with the extra weight of the GT, when we're taking corners with a bit of gusto, there's a little bit more roll than you get out of, let's say, a normal saloon version of the three series. Okay, so what are the other differences? Well, this one here rides higher than a normal three series, as well as that, as I said, it's 200 mils longer, which means you have brilliant uh, leg room to the rear there. It's absolutely fantastic, as well as that, you got better head height in this as well. All the seats have been raised inside it, and you get a more commanding view of the road and everything else like that. Tiny little criticism I'd have about it is the steering wheel. I can't see, for the example, from where I'm sitting, exactly how many kilometers we're doing and how many kilometers I've done this trip. So the trip information, because way down the bottom there. Seats are wonderfully comfortable. We have this black Dakota leather here, which is a nice thing to sit on, and great blue stitching throughout as well. Other thing as well, practicalities let's get them out of the way you've got a USB here to the front in the center console as well as that you've got in the center armrest as well as your typical BMW click on charger in there as well a few other things I like about the car as well is all the materials within the vehicle itself are really really good quality no surprise guys we're looking at a BMW here and I know there's some of you thinking that I should be giving out about this stuff, but I'm not. We got this nice wood-like trim going on here, and as well as that, loads of chrome detailing within the front here of the car itself. Infotainment system is absolutely cracking, and I, I, I quite often say this, right? When BMW first came out with this kind of infotainment setup, 
I have to say, we all thought it was quite awkward because you had to fiddle with the knob here in the center console with your left hand. And a lot of people said, no, you take your eyes off the road. But now, once you get used to one of these, there's less taking your eye up the road. What helps as well is there's a head-up display here in front of me, allows me go through all the radio channels as well as that. It's shown me the um, sat-nav information and everything like that, when I should turn and everything there as well. In the center console here, it's, uh, it's quite small, but this is brilliant. You get your internet and everything else like that on it. Uh, like Audi, you're able to keep up to date with the latest news headlines, weather, everything like that as well. It all just pops up through there. Uh, you're probably going to be paying some degree of a 4G or 3G subscription every three years or something like that through BMW if you opt for it. Now let's talk about prices of what we're driving here, right? Uh, to buy one of these new without the extras that we have in this vehicle, you're talking about in around 51,000 euro. Once again, no surprise. Now if you're in the UK, you're probably paying a lot less than that even when you take the change from euro to pound sterling. In Australia, guys, what are you paying in dollars for one of these? And the USA, of course, you're gonna be driving on the other side or the wrong side of the car. Uh, let us know what price you're paying for that there. By the way, folks, while I'm at it, uh, I'm working with Car Buyers Guide. Up here, you're gonna see a link to our website and that's gonna show you all of the used BMW 3 Series that are for sale on our site if you're in Ireland you might be able to have a Googaloo and have a poke around at that. We're running here on 19s at the moment, right? Now, usually when we're running on such big tires, I give out a lot, a lot about the road noise and things like that. And I have to say that despite the fact that we're sitting on 19s, the road noise is not awful. Yeah, there's a bit of it. Yeah, you're picking up some of it, but it's not that bad at all. It's actually quite a relaxing drive when you're inside the car itself. And I like that a lot as well. I suppose the only downside of the car, while I say that the 3 Series GT is more attractive than normal 5 Series, it's still not as attractive as, let's say, a saloon or a touring version. That's the only kind of downside that I pick out about the car. Yeah, it's got a little bit more roll going into corners and things like that, but it's nothing major. All in, yeah, look, I'm a BMW fan. I'm sorry to break it to you guys. I think they make marvelous cars, and this is one of them. Would I buy one? No. As I said earlier on, the price for this car, entry level is 51 grand for what we're sitting in here is 63 or 64,000 euro. BMW charge a lot for the non-standard equipment. Uh, we've got all these technology packs and things like that thrown in. They come in at thousands. Like, I mean, these 19 inch wheels, the pack that that comes with is in around three and a half thousand euro, which I suppose is the biggest negative about BMW. It's the price, how much you're gonna pay. God, it's a lot of money. But it's still a sweet car, isn't it? Anyway, this is Car Buyer's Guide. Over here, you're gonna see our logo. Please press it and follow our channel. As well as that, like if you like the video, subscribe if you like the video, and uh, leave the comments in the section below. We'll see you again very soon.